Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. So I'm Marine. And this is episode 135. So in this episode, we're going to be interviewing uh, Jay, uh, Twitter handle OddJ. Uh, and basically, he's a person we met at, what, the Bay Area, Bay Area. Maker Fair yeah. with Alex from Hackster. Super cool guy. Um, just a little bio from him. He was raised in Compton, Compton, went to college in San Francisco, got an art degree. Uh, he's an art degree graduate. And he's a self-taught maker, doing a lot of cool things with with, um, what, what, what was the robot called? Companion bots. Companion bots, yeah. yeah. So uh, here, straight out of Compton, here's Jay. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jay. Hey, guys. I couldn't resist saying that. I had to. I, I, I saw it happening, and I love that you went for it. <laughs> so how's it going? How, how have things uh, been? Good, good. Very uh, productive over our last time we've actually seen each other. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a couple months. Well, and you're yeah. in your office now, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm at work right now, but like, I got the time off to be able to chat with you guys just for you know a little while, just catch up, you know. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for that. Um, so I guess let's get right into it. Um, how, how, so you, you make these amazing companion box, uh, bots that we saw at the Maker Fair and that we you post Aussie. on Hackster. <laughs> yes, Aussie. Yeah. Uh, it's like a little spider. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, how, how did you get started with like tinkering and what inspired you to start and motivated to keep going? Let's see, starting, well, it's a long, long time ago. I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> far, far away. But, um, I honestly it was definitely art school. Um, you know, right out of high school, you have to like pick something you want to do. So I decided to go to art school as I draw a lot. But after being in art school for a while and going through the hard classes, I started realizing I wanted to do something else and not draw all my life because right. it's extremely hard to do. <laughs> so I found myself um, looking at like other things and robot designs and stuff like that. And then I started like slowly working my way up to robots. At first, I was just like sewing plushies together with small electronics in them, and <laughs> I just kept growing from there until eventually I got to the point where I am now, where now I'm building like full-on companion robots yeah. that are, you know, have sensors in them, they move around, they judge people. They judge people. <laughs> And you say you you don't like you didn't want to be drawing all the time, but like you showed us our your notebook at the uh, World Maker Fair, and it was or the Bay Area Maker Fair, and it was amazing. Like your drawings are so beautiful, and then you mm -hmm. use the different colored pens <laughs> to make it three D. It's so cool. You inspired yeah. me, by the way. I bought multicolored pens as well. Yeah, I bought one additional <laughs> color as well. <laughs> yeah, like, it's funny though because um, I originally went to school. I was going to be a comic book major, so I wanted to draw superheroes, mm -hmm. Iron Man, that type of stuff but as more i got into it the more i realized it's something i really don't want to do forever because it's just extremely hard really difficult to get into the industry and a lot of extra stuff like that but i kept sketching things out because i learned the best way to fully see something in 3d is to draw it out first so like i have my little multicolored like pen and stuff here that i will take like the basic pencil here and draw out the body but then i'll take the blue color pencil here and I'll like go into the internal designs like I would just go like oh here's the servo it should be and the servo oh, nice. should make this like that uh, this is where the speaker could be so this has to be maybe this like size and I just like write notes on it so it's, a, it's definitely part of my process <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I guess I do use my art degree to a to a high extent yeah, yeah. I, I mean the, the drawings you were doing were pretty damn good like yeah. I, I for sure can't do that <laughs> if we're trying to like sketch up what we want it's just a couple of boxes with some arrows and that's it yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't do anything yeah. cool it's way easier for me to just uh, go directly from like my head to CAD um, like I, I use Tinkercad uh, what, what, what uh, software do you I imagine because you're 3d printing all these things uh, what, what do you use I use Fusion 360. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I kind of had a fun time learning it. Originally, I um, was using One Two Three Design. Mm -hmm. and I was first teaching myself before I actually even owned a 3D printer. <laughs> but <laughs> of course, the uh, program got taken down. I think a while ago, and it just wouldn't work anymore. Uh -huh. So, luckily, since I was still in school, Fusion 360 had a uh, school type of gave oh, for free you yeah, know, school that's account. Awesome. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, I just jumped right on that, and I've been using it ever since. Yeah. So. I, I still use that, and I didn't even go to school, so 
Hopefully nobody from Autodesk watching. <laughs> <laughs> you still have yeah, your school email, though. So. Yeah, I still have the school email, so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but it's great. I mean, it's, it, they, it's promoting their software, and then if we use it for the company, we'll buy it. So <laughs> that's really what they're trying to do there. Yeah. Um, so then what, what inspires, like, your various robot designs? Is, is you have a bunch of different ones. I've been seeing you on Twitter. Like, you made one that looks like a spaceman. Uh, yeah. Of course, there's a Aussie that's like a, a spider, basically. So where, where do you get your ideas for this? Um, multiple places. I have a very overreactive imagination from <laughs> growing up reading everything. Especially like a whole bunch of mythology books. So when I first saw Alex come out with Archimedes, and of course, you know, Archimedes being Greek, I kind of went my own thing, went my own search for different mythologies, and I ended up choosing Asi out of the uh, African folklore of the uh, spider trickster god. So that's how that came about. Wow. Yeah, so I did some research on that and came out with that. And then the rest of them have been pretty much kind of the same notes, but I get inspired from. Multiple things: video games, television, movies. I'm a full-on nerd. Like I'll <laughs> pick up anything if I see it's interesting. Like, oh, they're in space. Well, I guess I'm going to go see this movie. <laughs> and then there's also times where like something will be happening in a movie scene or something I'm watching. I just pull out my sketchbook and I'm just like writing like little notes. Like, oh, this is a cool design, but I noticed this and this and this. And oh, I can like take this type of design detail from this and like add it with this, and it'll come out even cooler. So I really just try like um, keeping myself engrossed in many different like fun sci-fi things and just kind of go from there right have you like so far mostly focused on companion bots when you're working on your like ideas for things or have you kind of thought about different types of robots maybe a robot that's performing a certain function doing something like things like that have those are those like in your (laughs) idea yeah (laughs) I think you mentioned that. That's actually what I've been working on recently. Um, I, like I said, I'm still, I can CAD and like know the hardware very well, but my software skills are really still prototyping, like beta mode. <laughs> so I have no choice. Well, of course I had a choice, but like I've been teaching myself how to program with help from like other people and other resources. So I recently called myself mastering the ultrasonic sensor. So I made this like little buzzer type of like ball using Prometheus head design. <laughs> And putting an ultrasonic sensor in the eyes nice. so people can close so the buzzer goes off. Nice. Oh, that's really fun. Um, so, that, yeah, that can be used in like you can use it in a haunted house or something. Like have like a yeah, like, yeah. you definitely like edit that and like use a different soundboard to make it to play sounds instead or stuff like that. But funny thing you mentioned that because I was up last night actually redesigning the system because I figured like hey these ultrasonic sensor do this, what if it actually can like roll or something if I add servos. Well, so I can make tank treads, something like that, mm-hmm. or I can make like a cool like hexapod type of design if I use maybe two servos and probably a push pull design using a different type of levees and pull system. Oh, that sounds oh my so God. fun! Yeah, the mechanics oh. of it is going to be so fun to work out. <laughs> oh my God, that's like my favorite part. Honestly, is definitely the mechanics because I love drawing up the design. I love seeing it and stuff, but figuring out how I'm going to make this work is always a fun afternoon. Mm-hmm. Right. Like how you're something. physically gonna make it move? Yeah, yeah. And it's, doing it with, with like such small devices, like you know, just using two servos for a hexapod. That's uh, the, the the mechanics for that. That's that's fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I I got inspired a bit by it yesterday, and that's why I was like telling you guys like earlier I was up late because I had got the idea like suddenly once I got home, and I was just like I need to figure this out. Yeah, I mean, and creative it was kind of like. <laughs> Time just kind of flew by, and I was like, oh, it's 3 a.m. Oh, no. <laughs> Go to sleep. Oh, gosh. I mean, for 3 a.m., you look very fresh, just saying. Like, you, you know, like, I, I don't know. When I'm up till 3 a.m., I get zombified. <laughs> yeah. I have the power of coffee. True. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Um, so when you're sorry no, well, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. when you're like d- thinking of like oh this pulley lever system things like that uh do you usually like maybe pull inspiration from existing designs or how do you oh, yeah. go around like going through that design process well this is something i actually um got thanks to um, like my one of my personal favorite subgenres is steampunk and mostly because of the happy aesthetic like i love how everything in like steampunk universe just looks happy and like creative and stuff like that but thanks to me growing up and like loving those books, I've learned to take notes when I see different mechanical things. So like if we're like 
hanging out in a construction area and I saw like a cool pulley thing, I might take a quick stop and just like sketch out how that like maybe works and then like research it later and then I'll like take like I have like an entire like notebook full of like different mechanical systems and movements that I can probably use and will probably work. Definitely the probably part because I do have like times where it doesn't work and I'm just kind of like, well, gotta go back to the drawing board. <laughs> so it, 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 uh, it definitely evolves as I go. And the more I continuously try out new designs, I can usually incorporate those designs into newer stuff and go from there. Yeah. And, and as you've been like trying out new things and just like evolving how you do things, uh, I imagine your techniques and, and just like the tools you've used have changed over time. Um, oh, yeah. What, what are like some iterations that you've made or, or some like, um, you know, the tweaks that you've made to make it more efficient or just uh, make things work better? I have to use like Aussie is the best example for this because since that was like my first like robot I put in months on time trying to figure it out. Um, it's more of a simple like originally when I made his head rotate, I used a mini servo and I just attached it to a plate, mm -hmm. which it moved, but it moved mm -hmm. very horribly. Right. <laughs> a servo is not put in the direct middle place. I couldn't like put the plate right in the middle. I have to like move it to the side. So when it turned. It didn't turn in a full 360 degree, it kind of turned like a weird, I want to say 40 degree angle, and it just never stayed on plate and stuff like that. So I kept like researching, and then I found out, oh, I can probably use gears for this. So once you finally figure out how using a gear system, you can definitely add our 3D print a um, gear that can fit onto a servo, and then creating the base, having gear teeth on the bottom of it was able, allowed me to be able to just add that to it. And then the servo moved the gear base, and the gear base rotated, and the head got full 360 movement. That's nice. awesome. I think gears are one of the most fun things to play with, mm -hmm. like playing with gear ratios and mm -hmm. torque. It's just so much yeah. fun oh, to yeah. figure that stuff out. And yeah. then going into like you know weird gears, like on Thingiverse, a super common thing to print is uh, like planetary gears. Or like yeah, worm planetary gears. Yeah, worm gears. Bevel gears, gears the yeah. ones that turn at 90 degrees. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is so yeah. cool. So many different things. <laughs> yeah, so many different things. An infinite way to create anything. You just have to find the way that you yourself like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then, of course, having the tools to do it. True. Right. Yeah. Um, and I guess so. Like, what, what would be like the tools that you'd say are like? What's in your tool belt if you had to have one? It doesn't necessarily have to be fit on a belt, <laughs> of course. Like a three D printer <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> I've turned my room at home into like my personal lab. So <laughs> I pretty much have a desk and a bed. You know, my desk I have. Of course, my desktop with my two computer screens going because I have to have two now. Um, <laughs> so I have two 3D printers, which I have like set up a Creality and a FlashForge Finder. Nice. Um, and then I have, of course, like my screwdrivers, a whole bunch of screws, um, all sorted out, heat shrink wire, other wire, wire strippers. Mm -hmm. um, a Dremel is probably one of my favorite tools because I find myself having to make edits and I don't want to reprint something. So I'll just be like, I'm just going to drill that hole in here really quickly. Oh, yeah, way easier. I'll just the edit when I publish it. <laughs> it just has to look smooth. It doesn't matter if it came out that way on the print. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I personally have, like, I always call it a personal rule, um, but I do try my best to make it, my publish any of my work, I always try to make it as easy for anyone to copy without having to do too much. Mm -hmm. So what I usually try to do is anytime I make an edit of anything, I write it down, I mark it, something like that. And then when I do my second prints, because I try to make everything twice sometimes, depending on how big the uh, make is, I will make it twice, see how easy everything fits together, and then publish the new designs with that. Nice. So like my original will be like covered in hot glue, has like holes in weird places, <laughs> just doesn't look good. And the second one just looks like completely smooth, like it was completely calculated and designed. So. <laughs> And That's came awesome. out perfectly the first time or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I am a true advocate and telling everyone I have failed. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love that you document how you're doing it and try to make it easy for people to replicate. Because, mm -hmm. like, what else is yep. the maker community for, right? If not supporting each other. Yeah. And yeah, following like, you on I Twitter. Think my personal way of giving back to the maker community mm -hmm. is by I always make my stuff open source. And I always just try to publish it, especially things I'm like, okay, people really like this idea, so I'll publish it. 
Or if I see something that people like really don't care about, I won't publish it. I'll just be like, all right, I don't care about it so much. So I'll just keep that one on the side, put it on my shelf. Yeah. But it's pretty much depending on what people like. And that's why I'm like, okay, they like it. They want to see it. They want they want to make one one day. So let me just let it go out there and be published. True. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I saw on Hackster somebody made the gear bracelet you had made, like from your guide. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> have you seen like other projects that like people have made from your, inspired by your creations that have been like interesting to see? Not yet. Like my biggest problem um, as me as a person probably is the fact that I'm always working on something 24 seven. So I don't really get out much. And usually when I hear about an event, it's all last minute. So like, I would be already at home, like working on something. And then when a friend would message me like, Hey, this is cool. Like robotics event going on like in downtown LA today. And I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, oh. So I miss a lot of events. So that's why I'm really, um, I'm really hyped on going to like conventions and stuff. Cause that's like the only time I get to see like everything mm-hmm. and we'll talk to everybody and see what people come up with. I just love the entire, like entire thing of it all. Yeah, yeah. We, we love conventions, especially Maker Fairs, which uh, ho- hopefully the mini Maker Fairs will continue. Yeah, um, yeah and- uh, the one in LA is supposed to be here in December, so that, that one will still continue at least. Okay. Nice. But there's also other cons, you just have to find them. That's true, yeah, yeah. Uh, like we'll be going to Arm Tech Con, which is it's a different type of con, uh, or a different, uh, we were talking about Super Con earlier. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, cool, so... Where do you see like yourself like taking this journey? Like, where, 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 what's your idea for the future with making the companion box or just making cool things with hardware in general? Um, I like just making stuff in general. Honestly, I have no real plan. This is not something. I mean, it's something I wanted, but it was kind of like all accidental at one point. <laughs> Like when I finished Aussie and then my friend, because I didn't even have a Twitter back then. The first Aussie that was done, Mark Four, that was really good looking and everything was working perfectly. He posted it for me and that gained a lot of traction. And he tagged me on my Twitter account for that. And then it grew from there. But long term, I honestly only have like one real goal. And that's just to make something that is pretty much immortal. (laughs) <laughs> like, I know it sounds weird. No, no, it makes sense. <laughs> but like, if I can make like a famous design robot that like anyone can make, and it just like outlives me, and people are still making it like oh, forty years in the future, so cool. I will count that as a personal win. Okay, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, here's a standard example robot made by. Jay, 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I would count that as a epic win. Like, that, is, that is a goal of mine that I would love. But other than that, like currently I'm just working on um, going to more conventions, talking to more makers. Like I didn't even have a Twitter until Maker Fair. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, Maker Fair is when I figured out that I'm going to need a Twitter because everybody I was talking to was like, hey, add me on Twitter. And I'm like, Oops. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I gotta say, like at Maker Fair, I thought you were like such a killer networker. I was mm-hmm. like, wow, Jay, you're talking to everybody. <laughs> like you're, so you know. Many... Okay, I'm a big nerd, and like I know that they're like fanboys, and then also people in the same category, like friends. But I'm the nerd boy friend. I see like people that I've been watching on Instagram and YouTube, like Estefani, and mm-hmm. like other people like that and then they're just like hi i'll see your work i love your work and i was like oh my god what are you doing (laughs) (laughs) so stuff like that like i i have no idea how i've gotten good at this (laughs) i'm just being my natural weird nerdy self and that seems to work out pretty well for me yeah yeah and and it's fun i mean we love being around you so it's it's great that it's natural yeah Uh, they're just so much fun but yeah and also uh, fun thing about that when you're talking about the future um, I am working on probably my most craziest robot design because I'm actually finally sitting down and trying to put all the things I've learned into this new ultimate bot not quite ultimate bot but this new really big bot that I'm designing and now that I have a bigger 3D printer I can make bigger parts so I'm currently working trying to get that together but I just know this one's going to take time, but I'm hoping to be able to debut it at Supercon. Okay, cool. It's like slowly getting there. But. Will you be giving us sneak peeks over time? <laughs> yeah, um, definitely on my like Instagram and sometimes on my Twitter, but mostly on my Instagram. When I work on a big um, project, I start posting like 
the from here to here to here to here, and I talk about all the failures and stuff, just because I like to show people that hey, I am not perfect. I cannot make this right the first time. There is this is a whole journey that's yeah. <laughs> about to happen, yeah. and most of the time, like things don't turn out the way I want them to. Like, my last bottle, uh, Prometheus, that just got published, I believe, um, like a few weeks ago. That one had an LED ring that was sound reactivated and it used to glow when people like talk or like music was played. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, I couldn't fit that in my robot because of the wiring issues. Mm -hmm. So I had to scrap it. <laughs> but like, you can see the pictures on my Instagram of like it working, it looking good. But then when I took it on my first field test, it kind of just was just acting up everywhere and there's so many problems. Yeah. But, but showing that, uh, sorry, um, but showing that to like the people just so that they see the whole process of like it's the making isn't a linear thing like, oh, you have an idea and then you make it immediately and it's perfect. Uh, it's a process like there's a lot yeah. of work into it. There's a lot of grime and a lot of failures. Yeah, um, definitely a lot of failures. Yeah. Um, I believe in um, Adam Savage's book, uh, Everything's a Hammer. Mm -hmm. I just recently finished it and oh, he nice. describes um, two type of makers. And there is a type who think about everything, have everything measured out perfectly, have all the notes and stuff, and they make it one time perfectly. But then there's the other type of maker, which I think I am, and so is Adam apparently, where we get straight to work, and then we keep making edits as we go. So yeah. a lot of times there's a whole lot of like, oh, that didn't work. Okay, let's just mark that down, and we'll just keep going, just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd say I'm a combo of both. I'll, I'll try mm -hmm. to get it perfect as close as I can the first time, um, and hopefully it works that first time. But then there's always going to be edits. Like there's yeah. there's no way I can get it perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely something you have to learn, especially like I tell everyone, like learning how to fail. Like don't take the failure as a bad thing. Like mm -hmm. oh, it didn't work this time. Yeah. Let's troubleshoot. Why it didn't work? That's it's, true. It's, 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 like, problem is it a hardware problem yeah. yeah i mean the worst thing is being frustrated and then never touching it ever again yeah yeah, yeah. and then yeah. finding out a lot of people yeah, yeah. And, and then not finding out like what the issue was that's another thing because yeah. you know, it's it's fine to fail like if you then learn from it but if you fail and don't learn anything then right. it's kind of tough <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have my own troubleshooting list for when I'm doing stuff, and I always go, I always check the wiring first, especially mm -hmm. because I'm really bad at wiring correctly. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm really working on it, but I'm really bad at the wiring process. Um, but I always check the wiring first because it can always be a wiring process uh, mm -hmm. problem. That's like code. Or if the code looks good and it's compiling, everything is good, then I start looking at the hardware themselves because I have gotten like cheap China knockoff Arduino nanos. Oh, <laughs> and I destroyed a few of them before because I've accidentally like wired the power and the ground to the wrong areas and it'll oh. heat up really quickly. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I'll upload the code and the code will work and everything and it might do like one small thing that I wanted to do. And I'll be like, what's wrong? And then I switch out the boards and put in like, another board. And it's like, oh it works. I uh, fried the board. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've flat fried plenty of boards from doing that issue. <laughs> yeah. seen the, the tra sometimes the traces are small enough that they will act as a fuse, and so I've seen a little bit of smoke. And I'm like, why, why isn't it working? <laughs> Where, why, what's the smell coming from? <laughs> um, always fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Uh, luckily, they were cheap boards. It was like $2 boards. So it was, it was yeah, fun. <laughs> you don't really like lose anything. Yeah, yeah. Imagine do that to a, an array of pies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of wiring, do you use multimeters a lot in your when you're like using, like when you're creating and wiring things, like to check voltages and current, just for people who are out there who are like, what do I need to do hardware? <laughs> <laughs> um, I use multimeter here and there. Most of the time, I'm going to I'm kind of gun ho. <laughs> So I'm just kind of like, Geronimo, stab it and see if it works. But um, definitely when it comes to troubleshooting, I always grab a multimeter. That's because it's the best way to figure out if it's actually a wiring problem or something like that. And I do have one on my desk, but usually I can, uh, just from me using the same techniques I've been using for a while, I can kind of tell like which voltage is going to work to move what projects and what's not. That's why I kind of use microcontrollers often because microcontrollers are easier for small lithium ion batteries mm -hmm. compared to like using a Raspberry Pi, which we all know is a power guzzler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I still haven't found a 
comfortable way for me to power a Raspberry Pi yet. I'm working on it, but right. that means I have to add something to the robot and it might be heavier. If I carry it with me, weight distribution, I'll have to think about those type of things. Yeah, what I've done in the past, like for the Iron Man costume that we made is I'll have a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack just stuffed in my pocket and mm -hmm. then a really long USB cable going all the way to the Pi. <laughs> yeah. And that works. That'll last That's for, what that like, what is it? It's two, two, I think it'll work for like 10 hours, uh, about. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what Alex does with Archimedes, but she's really cool with it. Like, make this cool belt and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't thought of a plan for that yet. I probably should. I probably will soon. But I'm also working on getting a type of holder design for companion bots because something me and Alex learned from Maker Faire is wearing your bot on your shoulder for hours mm -hmm. among the day really starts hurting at the end. Right. Mm, yeah. That makes sense. You gotta, like, it has to brace on something. Using your back muscles makes the most sense because it's, like, mm. the strongest, usually. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking to a few of my friends who are into cosplay and stuff, and they're helping me, like, redesign some stuff. That's good. So so where do you see, like, this um, companion bots Ooh. trend going? Like, I mean, you and Alex are... Uh, probably the most famous ones that at least I know of uh, making companion bots. But, but where do you see that whole thing going in the future? Do you think everybody will have a companion bot? <laughs> I mean, my thing is I love the concept of having like a robot best friend. Like I love that in like sci-fi movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping it'll get to the point where that is kind of a normal thing. Like if we ever get to the point where AI is like really good or like, you know, a really good friend, you can just be like, oh, I'm going to put my AI in this cool robot that I built. Now we can like go places together and stuff like that. Right. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm really hoping that it has been growing. I have met a few people who started making their own companion bots. Um, Barb's working on Octopus now. She's been like slowly building it up. Um, so I'm really hoping it just becomes like a really big kind of like side category for robotics, like mm -hmm. you know building a robot for fun and not because you want like a functional claw thingy or right. something. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, the have you ever heard of Furbies? Um, yeah. Yeah, so like, I don't know, like I think the idea for Furbies, and that was a long time ago, I had one when I was five years old, um, uh -huh. and it was supposed to be your little companion, walk around places, mm -hmm. like talk to you, you can feed it with your finger, like things like that. Oh God, um, that's creepy. Yeah, it was, it was actually very <laughs> creepy looking, but if you make your yeah. own, you learn, plus if you like, you know, at some point put AI on it, it's just like so much nicer mm -hmm. to have your yeah. custom model, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah put really Alexa cool. on it. <laughs> 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 I mean, probably, I mean, I think Furby was popular back in the day. So, I mean, companion bots could get super popular, even commercially, like, who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah I mean, I'm never really in for it for the money, even though I've oh, had people approach me for it, but like, my dream is a little bit bigger than being on the rich list. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no. Love that you are so like you I feel like you really embody the maker spirit of, you know, mm -hmm. share and build and grow. So that's awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so let's see if any question any questions in the comments, let's see. Um no yeah. questions. If anybody's watching now and has a question for Jay, uh put it in the comments or in the live chat. Um, let's see any questions that we have here. I mean, um, wrapped up with the ones I had in the thing. Yeah. But... Um, do you have anything else you want to share with our viewers? Any cool things you're doing? Any advice for people doing things with hardware? Well, if I have to say, give anyone advice, because I don't have anything to show up sadly, like I said, it was like, I have to get to work. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if I had any advice, it literally don't give up. I know you probably failed today. I know you probably will fail tomorrow, but keep designing, keep making, keep working on it. In the end, you're going to make something amazing and you'll be forever proud of it. That's nice. awesome. Great, yeah. great advice. <laughs> awesome. So with that, I don't think anybody's typing anything in the chat. So yeah. we'll close it out then. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us, Jay. It was a pleasure talking with you again. Hopefully we'll yeah, get to see you. Me, guys. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to see you in San Francisco in October. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. if not, uh, we'll see then when, when else. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, All bye. Right. Have a good day. Bye. 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 <laughs> Uh, there we go. Cool. Awesome. All right.
I really quickly want to scroll through Jay's Instagram page. Oh, yeah. this is not the computer. Oh, keeper. Um, Instagram. <laughs> so um, oh, he no. has lots of cool... Game 3 Tech put a, a comment right as we were ending it. Oh, um, no. He said, um, so I see a lot of AI companions out there. One that jumps out at, uh, uh, at 800 us. Uh, what's your cost of build, roughly? Uh, oh, at 800 uh, US. Uh, what's your cost of build, roughly? Um, Ooh. Well, I, I could That's sort. I mean, he would be able to answer that the yeah. best. But um, just from like seeing his robots in person, it, it doesn't look like they're too expensive. Like he uses an Arduino Nano, uh, one of those like cheap small servos, or even True. like the bigger versions. That, but those are like ten dollars maybe. Um, and sometimes he's even told us that he uses a um, for like the head of some of his his robots. He uses um, a Christmas ornament. That he mm -hmm. stripped the paint off of. That way, he has a nice sphere. So yeah. it's it, it's for sure not eight hundred dollars. So oh, probably yeah. sub one hundred even. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jay seems very what do you call that? Like uh, frugal. Fr yeah, like very <laughs> like, like hacks weird. things together yeah, in the yeah. true sense of the mm -hmm. word. Like of what's lying around. It seems. So the, this is one of his. Let's see. This one is Prometheus, the one he's talking nice. about. Super cool. But uh, you know, scroll through. Uh, we'll put his tags in the description. Um, got some really cool robot designs on his Instagram page. Um, you know, also like does document the process a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's super fun to see, like, you know, the insides of the robots and stuff as well. And th this is the one we saw at Maker Fair, Aussie. Yeah, Aussie. Right, this is at Maker Fair, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. All right, so I will switch back to us. Um, cool. Yeah, Aussie's okay. super cool. It's, and Jay is, um, is great to talk to. Yeah, super oh, fun. There's some Matrix voices and a creator on there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Do, do, should be us. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, cool. Well. Awesome. Well, that was great speaking with Jay. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to seeing what robots. Uh, now he's got me excited too. I, I'm now thinking of making a companion bot. Yeah. Maybe for Halloween. For it. Think, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I would make. I like spacey things. Hmm. There's, the possibilities are endless. Yes, it is. Yes. They are. They are. <laughs> So um, let's see. Cool. So announcements then. Um, the uh, our voice uh, AI hardware contest on Hackstart.io with Snips and ARM. Uh, the hardware applications closed this past weekend. We spiked like from in two days. We went from like forty submissions to like 85, 86. Yeah. 86. <laughs> um, so that's great. We we still uh, we'll be announcing who. Um, we'll be getting free hardware. Uh, it'll be 20 people uh, getting free hardware. Uh, what, the next, schedule is to do it week? by Friday. No, the schedule oh, is to oh, do really? it by Friday. Okay, cool. If we don't get there, uh, we will definitely do it by Tuesday of next week. Yeah. But yeah. we will definitely try to do it by Friday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and little note, uh, if you're watching the news and the weather, um, there is a potential hurricane coming to South Florida, and we're yeah. based in South Florida. Uh -huh. So <laughs> hopefully we're, we're like all, everything will be fine. Um, but that may delay a couple things. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, exactly. Forgive us if there are delays. Um, yes, yes. It wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mother uh, Nature. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. This yeah. was episode 135. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.